So this is the Fujifilm SX20 and this is an APS-C vlog content creator's best tool because it allows you to have a foot in both worlds of creating content as well as running a professional videography and photography business. The SX20 can take you to the edge of the world and back. With its lightweight design, it can disappear into your backpack because it's so compact and lightweight. It doesn't take up too much space in your bag. And I mean, you can show the world all your talent because of the amount of features and its large battery capacity. So this camera was released in June of 2023, right? And some of its key product features. Firstly, it has a back illuminated Trans X CMOS 4 sensor that works to enhance image quality by reducing the amount of noise. The X processor 5 has AI technology built in and this camera actually has 19 film simulation modes inside. So it can replicate analog looking classic camera photos that have been developed by Fujifilm over the last 85 years. The X5 processor also has features to allow for subject detection through its deep learning AI technology and it can provide AI face tracking, a detection of human faces and eyes as well as it can automatically detect a broad range of subjects which include animals, birds, cars, motorcycles, bicycles, planes, trains, insects and even drones. So with a 5-axis in-body image stabilization system the SX20 also offers 7 stops of image stabilization for steady video and photo quality. You can also set the SX20 mode dials to your own customization besides it having its built-in vlog mode on the dial. This camera also works with the Fujifilm X app and it supports an extensive range of photo and video activities as well as it can transfer the photos and videos directly from the camera to your smartphone remotely. This camera can also be used as a webcam similar to some of the other brands and basically you plug in a type-c cable and then you set to go. The Fujifilm SX20 also allows you to shoot like a pro with raw video output by 12-bit Apple ProRes as well as it allows you to shoot content in 6.2K at 30 frames per second. The Fujifilm also has dual 3.5mm jacks for external audio input as well as headphones to listen to the audio that you are recording or monitor the audio that you are recording. So although this is a content creator, it's almost giving you the features of a high range or a top of the range camera. So in terms of technical specifications, from a dimensions aspect, this is 127 millimeters by 85 millimeters by 65 millimeters. And this camera weighs 491 grams. As I mentioned, the sensor is an APS-C Trans X CMOS 4 sensor with primary color filters built in and it's a 26.1 megapixel camera. In terms of its mounting, this has the Fujifilm X mounting, lens mounting. At the back, it has a 3-inch LCD monitor with varying angles and touchscreen ability. Above that, we have the viewfinder, which is quite a cool aspect for a vlogger. In terms of terminals, this has a USB Type-C port, which is a USB 3.2 Gen 2. It also has an HDMI micro connector Type D, and it has the two aforementioned 3.5mm jacks, one stereo microphone, as well as a 3.5mm stereo headphone. So in terms of its recording formats, this can shoot in a whole range of recording formats. The most important thing to take note of for a still image is this can shoot RAW in 14-bit RAW. And in terms of video recording, it does a whole range of video recordings. But some things to keep in mind, it does 6.2K in a 3 is to 2 ratio. It does 4K in a 16 by 9 and others, as well as it does full HD in 16 by 9 and others. Moving on to the battery. So the battery is an NPW235 lithium ion battery. And in terms of the battery life, right, for still images in economy mode, you can get approximately about 400 shots. In your regular mode, you might get about 750. So in terms of actual battery recording time for video, if we're shooting 6.2K, we get approximately 85 minutes worth of recording. Then if we're shooting 4K at 60 frames per second, we get about 80 minutes 
minutes worth of recording. Full HD, if we're shooting 60 frames per second, we get 95 minutes, as well as if we're shooting 120 frames per second. In terms of continuous battery recording, it is slightly longer than actual. So, I mean, if you're shooting 6.2K, we get about 120 minutes instead of 85. And then 4K, we get 110 minutes. And 1080p, we get approximately 150 minutes worth of recording time. In terms of transmission, this has Wi-Fi 5 built in, as well as Bluetooth version 4.2 for connection to the app and all of those things. Uh, one of the things I find most interesting about it, besides all the dials and all the cool features, is the fact that this, being a vlogging camera, still comes built in with a flash, as well as not forgetting the 19 modes worth of video. I mean, uh, photo, sorry, the 19 different retro photo modes. So without going too far in depth with this camera, the first question would be, who do I think this camera is best suited for? So this is suited for content creators, but not your, hey guys, welcome to the vlog. Not those sort of content creators. It's built for your professional, more your videography style content creators that wants to get awesome still pictures besides just, hey, welcome, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to the grocer, that sort of thing. No, so this is built more for a professional situation as well as vlogging. So if you're going out, you're gonna make a vlog of you going to do a shoot for work, to do photography, something. That's where this camera would fit in. So that's the sort of person that this marks towards. And I mean, this takes out some amazing still photos. When it comes down to the price, this retails for anywhere between 24,000 Rand and 28,000 Rand. So as a content creator, if you're just a vlogger, then this, wouldn't necessarily speak to you. Well, I mean, you could find other devices that come in at a lower price point that will still allow you to do the whole vlogging scenario or even just a regular smartphone. So that's where this fits in. And I mean, this takes out some amazing, amazing stills. And there's so many functions and features that are built in this into this camera. When I had the time to spend with this camera, I didn't actually have the ability to learn about all the functions and features built into this. So if you have one of your own, I mean, this is gonna unlock so much potential for you. And it's kind of cool that this was the first device that I had came into contact with from Fujifilm. So it's kind of cool. So now, um, when it comes down to it, this camera, and I mean, you guys know how much of a Sony fanboy I am. When we talk about Sony, this would compare to something like the A6700. And if we had to compare this side by side between the XS20 and the A6700, these are some of the points that would stand out. So they both have the same APS-C sensor. Some of the reason that you take the A6700 over the XS20, firstly, the A6700 has a higher max ISO being 12,800. It has a higher number of focus points having 759 compared to the 425 that the XS20 has. It is, the A6700 is environmentally sealed. So that means if you're going out for a shoot, if you're going out vlogging, that is actually waterproof and environmentally sealed. So you know that your camera is not going to be damaged and you can shoot in tough conditions. So when it comes to insect tracking autofocus, the A6700 has that built in. So it's better for macro photography. Now, what are some of the reasons that we would take the XS20 over the A6700? Firstly, the XS20 has the product showcase built in. So it makes it easier to shoot product reviews and unboxings. The XS20 also has the built-in flash, which means it's useful in low light situations. The XS20 also has a higher max electronic shutter being one over 32,000 compared to the one over 8,000 seconds in the A6700. In terms of continuous shooting, the XS20 also has a 20 frames per second ability compared to the 11 frames per second in the A6700. In terms of battery life, this is or this has a higher battery life being 750 shots compared to the 570 shots uh, of the A6700. In terms of max resolution, this has the 6.2K, whereas the A6700 has a 4K max resolution. So yeah guys, that kind of rounded up with the XS20. So I mean, 
uh, during the Hindu festival of Diwali, I was actually using this camera to take a couple of snaps of me and some of the other stuff that is going on. So it was actually quite a cool experience to have this camera, take a couple of snaps. And it did take quite a few awesome pictures. And I mean, when you think back to it, I mean, this is a 28,000 Rand or 24, 28,000 Rand camera compared to my 10, 12,000 Rand camera. So it's going to be good at the end of the day. Yeah, but it was also an awesome experience to experience something out of our comfort zone, being Fujifilm. And I mean, as you know, we've worked with Nikon, we've worked with Sony, that have been kind of my two cameras. And I mean, they work quite closely together, although they might be two separate companies. I mean, they're very much similar. And Fujifilm has been in the game for a very, very long time. So it was kind of cool to have this as one of the first exposures to the brand and to one of their content creator products. So yeah, in the comment section below, let me know what you think about the Fujifilm XS20. Whether you think it's a cool content creator tool, whether you think it might be something fitting for you. But anyway, guys, a big shout out to Fujifilm South Africa for sending out this device for, to let me have a look at and basically share whatever I've seen and found out with you. And yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you can let me know by giving a like rating if you did. And if you aren't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our future content. But guys, thank you very much for watching. My name is Prashant and I'll catch you in the next video.